Protein is considered one of the most important macronutrients to help you either grow or maintain muscle. Understanding what proteins are and what kinds to prioritize is going to help you make more educated decisions on what foods you want to eat. So we'll see what foods contain high quality protein and get some actionable takeaways that you can start implementing today. So what even are proteins? Well, proteins are these molecules that have a bunch of strands that are folded up on each other in a very specific way. So when they're properly folded, these proteins can actually function like a machine. Now you have a bunch of proteins all throughout your body doing different functions for your body. Now, some proteins make up your muscles and they actually contribute to the muscle contraction. So if you increase those proteins, if you increase the number of those proteins, you're gonna increase the force that your muscle can produce during that contraction. Also, when you increase the number of those proteins, the muscles get bigger. There's just simply more volume to your muscles. Now, these protein strands are made up of amino acids. Amino acids are super small molecules that are really important for building muscle because they make up the protein and proteins are what make up our muscles. So you need to be getting these amino acids to actually build muscle. Now, there's a lot of different types of amino acids. You have non-essential amino acids and non-essential amino acids, we can actually produce, our bodies can make those. But then you also have essential amino acids. We can't make these. We actually have to get these from our environment. We have to eat those in our diet. Now, when you eat a protein rich meal, your body will use the amino acids within that meal to repair any damaged muscles. Say after resistance training, you're gonna have some small micro damage. Those muscles need to be repaired. Well, your body's gonna be using those amino acids to make those repairs. But protein has another very special function. It can actually stimulate muscle growth on its own without even exercising. Now, when you eat amino acids, those amino acids can actually stimulate muscle protein synthesis, which is basically the creation of muscles. Now, there's a number of studies that have shown this to be the case. So they'll measure basically a before and after eating protein, and they've been able to show a statistically significant increase in your rate of muscle protein synthesis post protein consumption. Now I've made another video that covers this in detail, so check that out if you want to see the full description of it. But to summarize, researchers have found that eating protein stimulates muscle protein synthesis for a window of time after eating. It lasts for typically three to five hours depending on how much protein you've eaten. So some muscle building will occur just from eating protein but that's actually a pretty short window of time for muscle protein synthesis. If you were to do resistance training, that window would increase a lot to about 24 to 48 hours in total. Now that really shows an example of why resistance exercise is so important for maintaining or growing muscle, but we can still support this growth by eating higher quality amino acids that optimizes that window for muscle building. Now, studies are finding that the amino acids that stimulate the most muscle growth are leucine, isoleucine, and valine. Now, these are essential amino acids. Now, from these three essential amino acids, leucine seems to be the most potent at stimulating muscle growth. Now, what exactly is leucine doing? How is it causing so much muscle growth? Well, scientists are finding that leucine is actually stimulating a very specific type of cell signaling pathway. It's called the mTOR cell signaling pathway. Now, this mTOR pathway actually regulates muscle growth. Now, what exactly is this mTOR cell signaling pathway? Well, it's this master regulator. It's listening to all these environmental cues and determining how it's going to regulate most of the cells in your body. So it's responsible for regulating cell metabolism, cell death, growth, function, and more. So what are some of the cues that the mTOR pathway listens to? Well, there's a bunch of, it's a very complex process, but one example is the ingestion of amino acids like we just talked about. So leucine is one of those cues. Another one is growth factors. So you might've heard of IGF-1. That is a growth factor that stimulates the mTOR pathway. Leucine, so it seems to stimulate the mTOR pathway, but how much leucine do you actually need to properly stimulate it? What I found in the research is for young adult males, 15.5 milligrams per pound of body weight per day is what's recommended. So if you're 150 pounds, that's about 2.3 grams of leucine per day. Now, I sadly can't find much for young adult females, but I personally would feel safe aiming for the same amount. So 15.5 milligrams per pound of body weight per day. Now, if you're older, how many grams of leucine should you be eating per day? Well, studies are showing that as we get older, we actually become more resistant 
to that muscle growth stimulation that we get from eating protein. So we actually need more protein to stimulate muscle growth. So one study compared an older versus younger population, and they gave these groups two different mixes of amino acids. So each mix had a different percentage of leucine within it. So this is what they found. The black bars are before eating the protein, and the white bars are after eating. Now the y-axis is looking at the rate of muscle protein synthesis per hour. So in the elderly population, the group that only ate 26% leucine barely saw any increase in their rate of muscle protein synthesis. It wasn't even statistically significant. But the group that ate the 41% leucine saw a significant increase in their rate of muscle protein synthesis. So eating a larger amount of leucine can indeed increase the rate of your muscle protein synthesis on its own. So with larger doses, researchers have found that the older adults will actually increase their rate of muscle protein synthesis to about the same levels as young adults. So leucine is kind of a big deal. Because of this, a lot of studies are looking at how they can use leucine to help older populations retain their muscle mass. So yes, leucine does seem to stimulate the most muscle growth compared to other amino acids. But scientists are finding that it actually is even more effective when you pair it with all the other amino acids. You need all of them to actually build your muscles. So if you prioritize getting enough leucine to get that proper stimulus, and then you pair that with all the other amino acids that your body needs, that's what's gonna maximize your muscle growth. So many studies have found that just eating whey protein can actually give you the biggest muscle growth stimulus because it has the leucine in it, but also all these other amino acids, essential and non-essential, that can help you grow more muscle. So if you're having a hard time eating enough protein in a day, in those situations, you want to be prioritizing your leucine consumption. A small amount of leucine can go a long ways. It can actually offset that reduced amount of protein that you're eating because it can actually stimulate muscle growth more effectively than almost any other amino acid. So if you can't eat that much protein, then try to prioritize getting at least some leucine in your diet. So to get enough leucine, do you have to go out and buy a supplement? Well, probably not. It depends on what you're eating. If you're eating a lot of animal products, then you're likely going to get enough leucine in your diet. So things that contain quite a lot of leucine are milk, eggs, beef, chicken, salmon. Those have quite a lot of leucine in them. If you're say vegetarian, you can prioritize eating certain types of foods that do contain quite a bit of leucine. So those might be chickpeas, lentils, pumpkin seeds, hemp seeds, nuts, brown rice, those types of things. Um, if you're not getting that in your diet, then perhaps looking at a leucine supplement could be useful. Now, if you wanna see any of the studies I referenced for this video, they're all linked in the description below. So check those out. There's some really cool ones in there. Also, if you guys have any comments or questions about any of this in this video, put them in the comment section. I'm excited to chat with you guys about it. Okay, I'll see you in the next one.